All right, guys, this is going to be my review of the Prime Racing Cabinet from Prime Arcades. This is the stand-up version. It does have some unique things about it, so I want to get into it. One thing I want to do, though, I want to focus this particular review video on the gameplay. So there's going to be a lot of gameplay footage, but I'll be sure to go over everything you need to know about this along the way. I just don't want this video to be 30 minutes long, and there's so many games on this thing that it's important we cover all of our bases. So let's jump right into it. Gotta get used to the touchiness of these steering wheels. It's kind of, you know, just like moving from arcade to arcade. There's gonna be a different feel for each steering wheel. It is gonna be different per game here. Uh, so it's gonna take a little bit of time to kind of adjust to. Most of your standard arcade games though, they flow pretty well once you get everything calibrated within the steering wheel. As you can see, I'm not having much trouble handling. But I'm also not making really significant turns with the steering wheel this just happens to be where i like it i will admit you know we all know it's a non-force feedback steering wheel um so you know there's pros and cons with that i don't personally feel that i need force feedback when i'm playing truly classic arcade games you know unlike my dirt cabinet which is running a ps4 where first force feedback is a necessity uh, this is just a completely different feel i don't feel like i'm playing you know like, it's not a driving simulator for that matter, so I don't need all the aggressive feedback. All right, guys, kind of the biggest complaint I think about the cabinet overall is this Hori Apex Racing Wheel. It's not a bad wheel for the price. It does what you need it to do. It looks great, but it's just really light. It kind of has a bit of a cheaper feel to it. Uh, once you get it calibrated, it's great. It does take a while to learn the calibration, though. It looks great. If I want to quit the game, it's really easy to do. Simple quit button gets me out of there and I'm right back into the list. Now it does do that flash thing where the screen is actually minimizing and expands shortly after. That's only with this particular uh, upgraded system. So what I'm talking about here is I actually have an upgraded computer in this one. They have an upgraded model, the sit down model that has a bigger, more robust computer and that computer's inside of this. What is unique, and I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna go about it, but since I happen to have both systems with me, um, I am thinking about making a separate cabinet so that I can play head to head. That's right, with two of these systems, you can link them together via ethernet and play head to head, which I plan to do. Gentlemen, start your engines. Should've said this, one of the unique things about this this particular game, I had to hit the brake in order to select, which is a little bit strange compared to the previous game, the USA, where, oh, where I was doing it with the accelerator. So the steering wheel handles a little differently on this one. The dead zone is about the same. Very consistent, however. Feel like the turn radius is slightly affected, but overall comfortable. It's, it's definitely comfortable. But as you can see, it looks good, plays well. And I will say this: I feel like the feel of the steering wheel is uh, actually a little more ideal on this game than it was the previous. Let's go, let's go, let's get off the wall. Oh, oh no. Looking back to 12. Gotta get top 10, come on guys. Let's go, let's go. Oh, we're not gonna be able to do it. Son of a gun. Well there you have it, again. Again, the game offering is probably the best thing about this particular game. Now, those are some titles that you're used to. I will tell you this, Initial D plays great on here. Uh, again, this is, you know, it is PC running Windows. 
but this is an extremely user-friendly cabinet. Baby. Oh yeah, the RS, baby. Now this time I'm using the enter button to navigate through the menu. So just like any other type of multi k Initial D was like, it was on another level, man. So, it's gonna take me a minute here to figure out the button layout for changing the view. Okay, so the L1 button's gonna change the view. I personally prefer this view on the races. Switch it up here, we'll go back just to give you that, that view. Again, when I'm in the driver's seat from this view, I really like that before feedback. Truth is, I probably navigate a little easier this way, but I think it's more of a challenge looking at the car from the outside. This is my personal preference. But again, that's you know, from game to game, that's not always going to be the L1 button, and you just got to press those buttons to figure that out. Not really anything different than what you're used to from your average multi cam You can see it finally got the hang of it. Anyway, all right, so that's a good offering of arcade games. One of the unique things about this is if you hit this mode button here while you're cycling through the arcade games, hit the mode button. Now you're over to your console titles, which console titles give you a, a different offering. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe the console version of Crazy Taxi is actually pretty difficult to navigate with the steering wheel. It's just way too sensitive, but when I play the arcade version, it's a lot easier. Now, keep in mind, Crazy Taxi is designed to be sort of what it sounds like. It's supposed to be crazy in terms of the handling. So uh, it's not gonna run as smooth as say your Daytonas. Um, but again, you do have your console versions of games here. A couple of those duplicate titles, as I mentioned, Crazy Taxi's on both of them. Um, but then you get some unique ones like your uh, Hercules, your F1s, your Hot Wheels, your Lego Racer, you get Mario Kart 64 and Mario Kart Wii here. I don't really remember how Mario Kart Wii works, so let's try that one. Let's get to it. Now you can tell she's slowing down. Her frames per second is taking a bit of a hit. But let's see how it affects the gameplay. Usually the first hint of that is in the audio. Strangely enough, it's actually playing really well. My question is, how do we figure this out? All right, looks like L1. Oh, oh there we go, okay. So now we're in here, the square button is gonna be, how I use my weapons. Believe it or not, she's playing. She's playing fine. I haven't haven't noticed any hiccups. Oh, thought it's happy to slow down there. Come on, come on. We need these boosts. 
and no harm this time. Let's go. And still manages to finish him first. What do you know? Surprisingly, the gameplay is pretty smooth. Tad bit of slowdown. Not in the, I basically, basically there, basically there was really one moment um, where I noticed a tad bit of lag, but for the most part, she went pretty smooth. You got Midnight Club Three, fantastic game. Monster Jam, I actually don't know much about that. Haven't tried it. Uh, let's see your Need for Speed games. They play great. You even got Underground on here. I mean, um, and then of course Outrun 2006 absolute favorite i'll make this the last one i go over here now this one's running at 640 by 480 but i love that it makes the auto adjustments just gonna blast that real quick get to the game Okay, one thing about Outrun 2006, she is definitely more sensitive on the steering front. This might be one where you may want to tweak the steering wheel adjustments. To adjust this steering wheel sensitivity, we're going to focus on these top three buttons here at the top of the steering wheel, share, assign, and options. If you hold the assign button for three seconds, you'll see the top right light illuminate green. Then we press options and that'll get us into the steering sensitivity menu. It adjusts on a scale from green to blue, green being the least sensitive, blue being the most sensitive, and you simply use up and down to adjust those. If you wanna adjust the dead zone, you simply switch from DP to LS at the top of the steering wheel and do the exact same functions using the exact same scale. When you think back to your classic arcade games, so you do remember just the heavy metal steering wheels, you know, this, this is a plastic steering wheel, crap. So it definitely feels different from that perspective. All right, quick look at the back of the cabinet as we're looking at it here. I have a light mounted on the back. You can see the monitor there. Again, just excellent construction. The way they put this thing together is very sturdy. You can see the monitor. We're actually plugged in VGA. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the bottom portion to take a look at the lower port. All right, guys. Swing that door open here. And you are looking at the inside of the cabinet. You get the back of your coin door, the amplifier here. Got their prime arcades encoder. Your power supply. And here you're looking at the actual computer itself. Now this is their driving two. Uh, this comes with the standard driving one PC, okay? Now I've had some folks ask, I believe the original comes with 107, it might be 109, but I believe 107 games. Uh, what I'm looking at right now, um, I believe I'm up to 138. Um, I did manage to not well number one this was the cabinet and you guys sure a lot of you have seen it because if you follow me you likely uh, also follow retro ralph and other guys who uh, do arcade stuff but this is actually the same cabinet retro ralph had i got it from him he went ahead and made the call and got the uh driving to computer so they sent that to him and that's what's installed here so um, this i think got the count up to like 118 and then i was able to add a couple more games so basically we're sitting at um 128 games total and uh, i'm not sure what that original number was i think i've only actually added like six games so uh, with that being said what you're getting here and what you're looking at in terms of the display is not quite the the number of games that would traditionally come with this cabinet and they don't offer it as an option where you can just purchase the separate computer to put in um, but he was basically able to negotiate that. From what I understand, you can contact them directly and they can send it to you. Uh, they also do have, of course, your power cable and a nice on-off switch there. Mine's plugged into a, uh, a smart switch, so I, I don't use that. But um, as you can see, everything's just really well organized and well done in here. I do highly recommend the Driving 2. And since I do have the Driving 2 computer as well as the Driving 1, I can actually install that and will install that into another cabinet. 
and then I'll be able to play racing games in a co-op form, uh, cabinet to cabinet. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be a while before I do that, but um, I do have that computer and uh, do plan to, to do that. So. All right, guys, just some final thoughts on the cabinet. Overall, two thumbs up. I thought it was a great cabinet. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, in a few different categories, breaking this thing down, you have game selection, which I give a solid 9. Probably one of the best things about this cabinet is the game selection. I already talked about a lot of those games, so I don't need to get in it. Let's just say that most of the great titles you remember as a kid growing up are on this cabinet, and what else could you possibly ask for? Secondly, gameplay. I give that a 7 out of 10 uh, because the reality is there are some needs for calibration. You definitely can tell from game to game that you know, the steering wheel doesn't handle the same and it would be great if there was some consistency, but let's be realistic. That's kind of just the way that it is when you're emulating across a broad platform, uh, you know, different games from different eras uh, that incorporated different styles of gameplay. But what I did notice is this, most of those, what I call the tier one racers, things like San Francisco Rush, Cruising World, Cruising USA, um, Outrun, Outrun 2006 even, uh, maybe maybe like pole position uh, those handle pretty well from game to game so i can really just set it and forget it when i'm going in to play a game i personally want to play i'm not adjusting the steering wheel it all works out fine uh, and that even moves into some of you know a little bit newer era games the initial d's and things like that uh, but the reality is uh, i only have to make those adjustments if i'm pulling up a more obscure title or something that i wouldn't traditionally be playing anyway so since it is primarily set it and forget it for me i'm going to lean toward the high side and give it a solid seven in terms of product build, uh, this is a 10 out of 10, hands down. I wouldn't change one thing about the way this is built. Awesome cabinet, very sturdy, very dur durable, very heavy, uh, just good construction. It's a well-built cabinet. And then lastly, price. That's where uh, the reality is. It's just overpriced, and I have to give it a 4 out of 10. Um, this cabinet, I think, would be great somewhere around that 1800 to 2000 price point. But when you get up around $25 to $2,700, uh, the reality is that's a pretty steep penny to play for a cabinet like this, especially when you could build uh, an emulator that could do a lot of similar things. Like, overall, I do think it's a fantastic cabinet to own. If you're a home arcade owner, you know, and you have several A1 ups or an ALU or any combination of those um, in your house, and you kind of have that designated space and you have room for a full size cabinet, I would recommend this cabinet for sure. The Prime Arcade's racing cabinet is a great collection of racing games and a very solid built cabinet um, and they did a great job overall so the reality is i give it those two thumbs up and i think it's something you should own uh, but that's pretty much it don't forget to like share and subscribe let me know what you think in the comments maybe something other than ah, it's too pricey we get that i do want to hear what you have to say and if you want to see more gameplay you uh, have more questions about the cabinet feel free to uh, drop me a line and i will respond back other than that you all have a great one until next time